going on guys welcome back another lovely rainy crappy terrible miserable day here at hq which is annoying so i still can't get the 31 up here but anyway still got a few things to tick along with on this engine got to do things like rear main seal cover plate um thermostat housing and thermostat get all that in i'm then gonna put the crank gear on for the timing and time it while i've got the sump off so you can check everything um, and then it's time to get the sump ready, get the bung welded in and get the sump and the pickup on and after that it's more or less together. So, getting close, which is exciting. Alright guys, so I actually decided to paint the thermostat housing because it was a bit ratty um, and may as well go through the effort considering how nice the motor's starting to look. So uh, what I'm going to do while I'm waiting for that to dry um, is time the motor. So one thing I didn't mention uh, in the episode that I filmed yesterday about putting the head on, which I probably should have, is uh, Base, sorry, try not to say basically. Um, for a lot of you, or for most, the best practice is to get your engine at top dead center before the head goes on. We did do this before the head went on. I just didn't talk about it in the video, but get your engine to top dead center before the head goes on. That way, also get the head to top dead center before the head goes on. That way you're not having to turn anything over to time the engine once the head goes on. Because RB30s are an interference engine, means that the valves and piston tops do clash if they're not timed correctly. So the last thing you want to be doing is having to turn this thing over without any timing, timing gear on it because you will collect valves with pistons. Obviously, turning over by hand is not a big deal, but it's still not something you want to do. So good practice, get the head to top dead center, get the engine to top dead center, then put the head on. If you you should pretty have a pretty good idea of what top dead center is if you're going this far with an engine. <laughs> so yeah, do that. So anyway, I've got to get this timing gear on. Um, I couldn't actually find a timing kit with that came with the crank gear, even though in that video I lied through my teeth and said most of them do. Apparently they don't. So <laughs> uh, I got this one off the RB25 that I pulled down. You would have seen in that video. So I'm just going to reuse this one because there's nothing wrong with it. It came off that RB25 fine. I didn't have to destroy it to get it off. So I'm going to use this one. I'm just going to get a nice big socket that fits over it and just tap it on there with the keyway. And uh, then we'll get a timing belt on this motor. And then I have uh, no issues having to turn it over because it's got a timing belt. So that's going to be awesome. Alright guys, so while we're waiting for that paint to dry, we'll time this motor. So time to install the new Gates Racing timing kit. Weather's starting to turn on a bit for us, so hopefully that means the end of all this rain. But uh, so my timing kit didn't actually come with this spring, which is something I thought it would have come with as well, but that's alright, doesn't particularly matter. I just put the old one on the new tensioner. So your tensioner uses, that's a 5mm Allen key, and that's how you sort of release and, and unrelease your tensioner to get your belt on. Got your new belt here, you see it's got two timer marks on it. Um, these are not evenly spaced around the bed, they're shorter on one side. The, that side is the tension side when you put it on. On your cam gear you will see, not very good lighting at the moment, but you'll see this mark here. That's one timing mark there. And on the crank gear, you have a timing mark also. Crank gear timing mark generally lines up with this little niche. Um, the cam gear sort of ends up where it has to end up, but as I stated, make sure everything's sort of in top dead center. Um, getting this on, as you probably just saw, is a bit of a pain, especially with the keyway. Just put a little bit of grease in the keyway and just tap it on with a socket. You just got to be careful not to misalign it, otherwise you'll pop the keyway out, which is also a pain. Um, so this is where your tensioner actually bolts onto, and this little stud here is just what holds the, the retention of the spring. So, um, yeah. So all I'm going to do here is, uh, because of the way this hole is offset in the gear it actually clashes with the water pump so you sort of have to I don't know I suppose jimmy it around a bit It'd be a bit of a pain especially considering it's a bearing it's meant to roll it sort of just goes on like that that retainer just goes over that hole and then you use your 5 mil allen key and you can sort of do that with it that sort of gets the tension off um, what I generally like to do especially if you're doing this on your own is uh, off the alternator bracket here you 
can just get a just a zip tie. I'll get a zip tie so that I can sit sit that Allen key in it if you if you need to. If you're having trouble, if not, you can just rest it against the crank. Uh, basically, whatever helps you get your belt on. So I just chuck that on. Get your nut. Put your nut on. You don't want to do this up tight just yet. So I'll just do it up sort of firm. That's the other thing. If you want, if you want to, you can actually just pull this around and uh, sort of just nip this up and lock it. And that somewhat keeps it there. Um, generally, I just I don't do that though. So here we have belt. Um, I don't know how much that the other frame's going to come out. So as you saw, Allen keys just held up with the zip tie because I'm doing it on my own, which just helps a little bit. Got your belt, you've got two timing marks. They're actually closer on one side and it is directional. Um, well, actually, I'm not sure if they're directional, but it has arrows on it. Either way, I'm going to put that on the tension side. Uh, and obviously, the shorter, there I go with the obviously again. The shorter, where the marks are shorter, is the tension side. So, what you want to be doing is uh, line up your crank mark on your mark on your crank, which is there. Run that up and then run up. Line up your cam, cam gear mark. So, I just find it easier to rotate the cam a little bit. So you can line up that mark. That's a bit far over. Give yourself a bit more on the tensioner if you need to. I honestly find it a lot easier to do the cam mark first and then the crank mark, but just if I did that, I'll be right in the view of the camera the whole time. So what a lot of people do here as well if they're doing it by themselves, is if you get it on the cam mark, you can actually just zip tie the belt to the gear. This stops it from jumping. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a tricky pain to do on your own, but you just gotta persist with it. It keeps jumping off. That one. So now that's on there. Gotta try and Turn this cam again. Without that jumping, like so. Should give you just enough to get it over the tensioner. Double check all your markings are good, which they are. It's looking very nice. And then off comes the tensioner. And that's uh, getting the belt on there. So that's the first step. Put the belt on. You want to get a good tension on that side. Easiest way to do that is just install your crank bolt and just turn that just to get the tension, just till it just starts to pick up the cam. And that's the tension there. So that's where your tension is picking up all the all the tension. So from here, you just lock off your tension and nut. The torque setting for this tension nut is actually 40 foot pounds. So that's your timing install pretty well done. From here you just get your socket and just do a really slow turnover of the motor just to make sure that you're not collecting any valves with any pistons. And all seems to be great. So there you go. Lovely. Nice and lovely. So there you go. That's it timed. So now the timing's done. It's uh, time to do this thermostat. My thermostat housing has dried. Uh, as far as doing this, it receives pretty much exactly the same treatment as every other mating surface on the block. Uh, like you've seen with most of this build, I don't actually have most of the bottom end gaskets, so I've just been using RTV. So I just give both surfaces, a nice good clean, some brake clean. 
They've already had a good scrape off. They're nice and clean. Um, also, the reason I use brake clean for this sort of stuff is just because it's, it's easy to get, it's convenient, and it comes in a spray bottle, which makes it real easy to use. But uh, thinners, prep sole, uh, basically anything that, any cleaning agent that doesn't leave any residue or any film is what you want for mating services. So you could use just about anything uh, along those lines, as I was saying, a lot of prep, paint prep stuff like thinners and prep sole. It's fine, I just find because Brake Clean comes in this really handy little spray bottle, makes it really easy to use. So next thing I'm going to be doing is getting my sump prepped and ready to go on. As you know, I need a welder bung in it for my oil temp sender. So basically it starts with the same as everything else, is scraping off all the gasket and goop off the uh, mating surface, getting that nice and cleaned up. Then I will degrease and wash out the entire sump, pick my spot for my bung, give it a nice hole where I can weld, grind up the surface so that it's nice and clean and give it a weld up. And then it'll be a final clean out, brake cleaner clean out sort of deal. I'll give it a paint so it's nice and pretty. And then it can be pretty much ready to go on as well. So we'll get into that. Alrighty, so you see here is where I've chosen to put my bung for my oil temperature sender. This is going to go in there and get welded. Um, the reason I chose this position here, although it might look kind of random, uh, firstly it's a nice flat surface of the sump uh, where you can get a nice good seal and a good weld. Secondly, it's right next to the release bung. Being that this is the emptying bung, I would go ahead and assume that this is the lowest part of the sump. So this, although it could have been moved down a bit more, I'm not that worried, but this is um, pretty close to the lowest part of the sump here. Another reason is that this is on the intake side of the motor, which is good because firstly, it means I don't have to have wiring around the exhaust side where it's generally hotter. Secondly is on the exhaust side of the motor, you see there, oops, sorry, wrong side. The exhaust side over this side, Nope, this is the right side. The exhaust side. <laughs> right there you have your oil return from your turbo. So basically the oil return from the turbo is gonna be hotter. So the reason I've chosen this position is, seems to be quite nice and low in the sump. It's a nice flat surface to get a good weld. It's not gonna be anywhere where it's getting uh, false readings from hot oil coming back into the sump. So it's gonna be a nice accurate reading here. I shall hope. And the other thing is given that that is the emptying drain hole, I'm going to assume that this is not going to clash with anything. Obviously I haven't checked the car, which is silly, but I'm pretty sure it's not gonna clash with anything here. So this is where I've chosen to put it. I've also chosen to put it at the back of the hump. Uh, so I assume that this is always gonna be covered in oil. And if it's not, I've probably got problems. If we've got less oil than that in the sump at any time, I've probably got some problems. So that's why I've chosen with this guy. So, Clean this up with a wire brush, get a nice clean surface to weld on. So now I'll just give this a good blowout. I'll make sure there's no dags on the inside. It feels really good, there's, oh, there's one there. Make sure I get rid of him. Don't want any dags in there, anything that might fall, like drop off. And then I'll blow this out with the air and start prepping to 
weld this in. Righto guys, so I'm just about ready to start TIGging. Uh, I've set up the TIG. I'm running uh, 1.6 tungsten with number six carbon and gas lens. Uh, this is just some old practice pieces that I dug out uh, that I'm just gonna use. Obviously very different, but they're pretty much the same gauge as the, the material on that sump. So I'll just use them as a bit of a practice run just to make sure it's all right. I've got some 1.6 stainless filler and I am running at 10 CFH. Uh, I tend to run my gas pretty high just because I'm not a very experienced welder and I don't know, uh, I suppose, how high it's meant to be. And I always figure that more gas coverage is better than not enough. So I'm just gonna get a few practice runs in on this stainless and uh, then clean up the, the actual sump and give it a go. So I'm still very, got very little experience TIG welding. What you can see here, which is stuff I did a long time ago, is essentially all the experience I've got. The reason these are so bad is because all I had was 2.4 mil filler. So I had to weld on like 90, I was, I, was, I was on about 70 or 80 amps, just because I needed that to melt the filler. I didn't have any 1.6, so that's why these ended up so big and gross colored and all sorts of stuff. So I'll get a bit more practice in. Anyway, it's this, this sump, I don't, I'm not too worried about it being pretty. I really am only worried about it having a nice, good seal. I just don't want it to leak. I really, I couldn't care what it looks like, really. There you have more or less the product. It is not pretty even the slightest, but it is welded nonetheless and hopefully will not leak. What I will do is probably just do a lap of Permatex on it just to ensure that it's not gonna leak. And uh, yeah, then we'll clean the sump up and give it a coat of paint. So anyway, I've got a lot to learn with TIGGIN and, and fabrication, but I do quite enjoy it. Um, it's just hard getting comfortable. It's also hard working, something like this. Uh, we are building we're planning on building another shed out the back here which will actually have a fab shop in it so that i actually have room to do fab work but obviously this is not ideal it's hard to get comfortable but nonetheless i do quite enjoy it all righty so pretty much ready to start painting up this sump Hit it with brake clean again after I cleaned it out that time. So it's been, had a bit of a light sand, hit brake clean, we're good. And uh, even after that second clean with degreaser and a good gurney out, I'm still finding bits of metal in it. So it's really important to really clean your sumps out, especially if you're using something like this that's had all those gross bits of bearing in it. So um, after I painted it, once the inside of it's dried out a bit more, I'll give the inside of it a hit with brake clean as well before it actually goes back on. But um, inside of it's still wet at the moment, so. Got the heat lamp here, trying to keep it a bit hot. Closed up the door, stop the breeze coming through. So, pretty it up, give it a coat of paint so it looks nice and new like the rest of the motor. And uh, yeah, should be looking real nice and shit hot then. Righto guys, so while that uh, tacks off, dries off a bit in the heat, I've uh, taken the RV off the engine stand because I need to put on the rear main plate because the rear main has to be on before the sump can go on, so that's got to happen now. 
After that happens, you can go back on the stand and flip over and start working out getting the sump and pickup on. So all I'm gonna do here is the same thing I pretty much do with everything. Clean these up. This has already been cleaned up with a blade as you saw in the block preparation video. Just gonna give all this a hit with brake clean. Make sure it's all nice and clean. Gonna do the same with the plate. And as always on the rubber seal, I'm gonna put some rubber grease and I'm gonna torque these bolts down uh, to, I think these are about 10 or 15 foot pound again as well. So that same thing where it's just a one firm, one hand tight, should be sweet. That's a real dodgy way of doing it. If you've got a small enough torque wrench, whatever, do that. But uh, we, we do actually have one, don't we, Rex? Yes, we do. Oh, we do. I'm just not going to use it. <laughs> Haven't been using it. Yeah, firm, but don't break them. It's basically what you want. If they're not broken, they're probably good. All right, I'm going to knock the spigot in now. Just get an appropriate size socket. And knock him into the back of the crank there. So there you go, new second hand <laughs> rear main seal for this absolute budget build. Spigot's installed, so now it can go back on the stand and get ready to receive its pickup and sump. Alrighty, so currently in the process of wrinkle blacking my timing covers. I reckon that's going to look pretty cool. While I'm waiting between coats and that, I'm going to get this ready for uh, sump uh, install. As you remember when I pulled this engine down, this O-ring is not complete, it's cracked, which is bad. Um, I don't have a new one, but I pulled one of the ones out of the other motors that wasn't cracked. So, what I may do is actually just put a smear of RTV on the pickup as well, just to make sure it gets a nice good seal. Uh, just because I really don't want it to, <laughs> you know, be sucking air, that's not good. So I wanted to have a good nice seal, so I just put a smear of RTV on it, I think. Put the pickup in. And uh, yeah, put the sump on. First thing I will do though, I will actually punch in the blank for the rear dipstick position. Just because obviously, once the sump's on, if you like accidentally punch it too far or punch it through or drop anything in the engine or anything like that, it makes everything really hard. So you wanna make sure everything that needs to really be done in that, I suppose, sense is done when you put the sump on. That way you don't have to try and fish stuff out of your motor. Or you don't have to remove the sump again because that's not what you want at all, so. I'll do that first and then I'll start getting this prepped. This is going to be exactly the same as everything else, just brake clean surfaces, RTV bolts. Uh, pretty sure these bolts again are about 10 foot pound. There's heaps of them, so yeah. Anyway, I'll push this on time lapse and we'll uh, get, get to that. Alrighty, so sump's on. Did come into a bit of an issue with the uh, sump plug. This sump's actually been stripped and modified and done again. I tried to put the sump bolt out of the stock one in here and figured out that it's actually been modified. So I ended up just uh, basically thread taping this up because this is not very happy. It sucks, but it's too late because I've already put it on there. It's already welded the bung and everything's done. I should have checked that before. I would have used that sump instead because it's obviously better. But anyway, this is just going to be something now that probably plagues me for the rest of this engine's life. Or until I change this sump, but anyway. It looks good. Happy with it. Looks great. So I've got my temp sender in there. That's my temp sender probe. And it's all locked off, so I'm going to chuck the oil filter on. Try and close up as much of this motor as I can. I'm going to polish my cover. And then install my cover once it's been polished. Because obviously these fittings go in from the top, so that's alright. I might actually go down to the skyline and get them. And put them in. And then when these dry off tonight, they can go on. 
And after that, the actual engine component is more or less complete, bolted together. Then it's just ancillaries from there, which I'll start working on. So, yeah, awesome. We'll finish this off. It's probably going to be a fairly long episode at this point, I, I predict, because I've been filming all day. I haven't actually broken it up at all, but sorry if this episode is really long, guys, but I hope you enjoy it. And um, if it is super long, it may not be three episodes this week. I may just do two if this is super long, but... There's not because it's so much little stuff that's happening. I'd rather do a big episode of all this little stuff that's going on than break it up. But uh, yeah. Also, I won't film me polishing my cover because it's just long and annoying and probably not very good to watch. But I just use that Sal Salvol uh, chrome polish, metal polish, and a clean rag and just polish her up. Brings that shine on. Looks awesome. So that's what I do there. So we have more or less an engine together and it's looking great. Chuck a filter on, nice polished cover. Wrinkle black time and covers. Look real nice. Looks real great. This is my new pressure sender for my Defi. That's my oil temp in its new bung in the sump, which is looking great. It's looking really nice. I put my little fittings in my cover for my catch can. So yeah, looking great. So a few things I still need to do to it, obviously. It needs a dizzy. I need to sort out uh, all my ancillaries, my boltons, my manifolds. I still gotta paint my intake manifolds, which I might try and do tonight. Uh, but I need to find another turbo manifold because that one of mine is just way too severely cracked. So I'm working on doing that at the moment. Once that's in there, I can work out my oil feed. I should probably pull these out and seal them properly. Those are water fittings, which I don't need to use anymore. Cause, uh, my T3, T4 is oil only, no water. So yeah, it's all coming together, which is awesome. Loving it. I need to go down to the to the bottom shed and find all these studs that I will have down there to put in for my intake and exhaust, but very happy with how it's looking, how it's coming along. Super cool. Mighty RB. Back again. How good are RB30s, mate? Rex reckons uh, we should call it Skippy instead of Frankenbin. Yeah, because it came out of a skip bin. Skip bin. Skippy the skip bin. It's as Australian as they get. It does fit quite well considering uh, the origins of the motor and the fact that it is an RB30 and this is Australia. So, Skippy it is. Skippy the bin kangaroo. Skippy the bin motor. Lovely. Looking great. So, I have to fish out. I've got my RB25. Alternator down there, which I'll have to fish out and put on as well. So, a few things I still need to do, but uh, really coming together. And I suppose it's pretty much an engine now. Can't wait. Getting real excited. Getting real excited to drive again. So, anyway, guys, this has probably been a massively long episode, I'm predicting by how much I've filmed. So, I hope you've enjoyed. And uh, keep posted for the next episode. I'll put a link in the description down below where you can buy stickers. As always, if you want to support the channel, that'd be awesome. But if not, just tell your mates about us. It's the best way. The best thing you can do for us is just tell your friends about these goobers that build motors in this shed. So, if you want to support the channel, hit like. If not, you're a cunt. <laughs> well, yeah, that reminds me. Here, smash like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think, and uh, we'll see you later on the week for another episode. Cheers, guys.